Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So day two of the NFL Draft just wrapped up. The Jets walked away with two players. Second round pick, running back from Iowa State. One of my all-time favorite college players, Brees Hall. And then in round three, coming back, Jeremy Rutger, tight end from Ohio State. I'm almost speechless. I'm almost at a loss for words when I think about, you know, the totality of this draft. Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, Jermaine Johnson, Brees Hall and Rutgers, are you kidding me? That's five impact players that the Jets added in 48 hours. The Jets have added five impact players. And this was actually a point that somebody brought up. It was a great point. The Jets landed the best running back in the draft, the best cornerback in the draft, arguably the best wide receiver and edge rusher in the draft. And you look at Jeremy Rutgers, yes, of course, more of a deve uh, developmental tight end, but this guy's going to play. You know, when I'm thinking about the tight end position long term, two, three, four years from now, I'm thinking about Rutger. And as much as I like Uzama, you know, he is up there in age. He has, you know, had some down seasons and everything like that. Don't get me wrong. I am totally pumped up for CJ. But uh, I, again, you know, the tight end position, it does get beat up. And um, Ru Rutger's here to stay. Okay, Joe Douglas is not going to invest a third round pick in a tight end if there, there's no there's no future okay i think mike lafleur had a lot to do with this pick as well and really when i'm looking at Brees hall and rutger they don't really fill immediate needs maybe it was more safety that was a bigger need uh, maybe tackle but i think right now like joe douglas trusted his board and added talented players with high upsides all of these guys are going to come in and fit the culture and i think that's really really important you know i, I just can't tell you how excited i am when i take a look at the list of these players it it gets me fired up. It really does. And the crazy thing is, the draft isn't even over. The Jets still have more opportunities to add talented players to the roster. Okay, so super, super exciting stuff. But let's talk about Brees Hall for a second, okay? Because I felt like, you know, although Brees Hall definitely, in my mind, had a chance to go to the Jets, I didn't think he was going to be the favorite. And I do feel like this pick is... There, there's more that meets the eye with Brees Hall here because... I think it's I think it says a lot of things. Number one, Brees Hall is going to come in and have a big, big role of the offense, or in the offense rather. You know, we take a look at the how the 49ers established the running game throughout the years, and it was always a stable of backs, right? It was always multiple guys getting carries. Uh, of course, you know, you would have the one, but it's not like a Derrick Henry situation. It's not like a, a Delvin Cook situation where you have your one bell cow and then the scraps are kind of left behind, a couple snaps here and there for one or two players. It the, the carries are spread out. Okay, and, and obviously Michael Carter coming off a great season and invested a fourth round pick in him last year. I think Brees Hall and Michael Carter are going to be a great tandem, but I do feel like Brees Hall might have a little bit of an edge. Okay, think about it. If the Jets invested a second round pick in a running back, a position that we don't, again, necessarily need, he's going to be getting playing time and the Jets traded up for him. We also passed on obvious needs. Again, safety, offensive line, linebacker. What does that tell you? It tells you it, it tells you that Brees Hall is going to be getting significant playing time this upcoming season, and the Jets really view this guy as a difference maker. You're not going to invest a second round pick in a running back when you already have a good running back on the team. If you don't really believe in him, if you think he's okay, I don't think that's the case. <clears throat> I think the draft analysts are right. I, I do I do believe Brees Hall is the best running back in the class. I like Walker from Michigan State. I like Robinson, but I, I do feel like Hall is. He's ahead of those guys, and uh, the Jets landed him. The elusiveness, the power, the ability to stop on a dime and cut uh, the accolades, the production. Iowa State really fed him over the past couple of seasons, and and he, of course he did come into uh, Iowa State with a ton of hype out of high school, uh, but he lived up to it. You know, he definitely lived up to it, and. I also think this this does send a message to Makai Becton. Not only did we just pass on offensive line at 4, 10, and 26, but we also pass on offensive line in the second round here. Okay, so I think it's a good sign from the Becton front. I could be assuming things here, but to me, it does make sense. As far as Jeremy Ruckert is concerned, okay, first and foremost, what an awesome story, right? Grew up a big Jet fan, wanted to be a Jet, 
and it actually happens. Okay, what are the chances? Just truly incredible. I, I'm totally pumped up to see what Rucker does in the preseason because I do feel like he will be getting a lot of snaps in the preseason. Uh, and he also has two veterans in front of him in Conklin and Uzama. So, you know, maybe if Rucker isn't 100% ready to go from day one, that's completely okay. We have guys that can take the bulk of the snaps and he could also learn from these veterans as well. You know, Conklin and Uzama, they've... They've seen their fair share of NFL defenses. They know how to game plan. Obviously, the, both both tight ends are coming off career seasons. I think it's important. I really, really do. Uh, whenever you have a young player stepping into a you know a, a situation where the team is putting a lot on their a lot on their plate, a lot of responsibilities, the pressure mounts, the expectations rise. Rucker is walking into a fantastic. I don't want to say you know NFL is not easy or anything like that, but he he's in a sweet position. Okay, again, the expectations won't be through the roof. He has time to develop. He has guys in front of him, veteran guy, veteran teammates that are will, more than willing to help. And, you know, you look at what he can do in the passing game in due time, specifically in the red zone, over the middle of the field, up the seam. He has the athletic ability. He has the size. I mean, this, I don't want to say it's a steal because, again, I don't want to be... That, you know, the Jet fan where I'm just, you know, gushing over every single pick. Oh, the Jets, you know, A plus here, A plus here, A plus here. But I, I, I can't really find anything to complain about. Maybe tight end and running back aren't the biggest needs in the world. But you know what? We, we, we got three guys in the first round that are coming in and filling needs, right? Three guys that are, that are totally, total upgrades. And now it gives the Jets an opportunity to strike big with the big time talents in rounds two and rounds three. So we got a couple picks tomorrow. I'm gonna be doing the live reactions for them. It should be a lot of fun. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Brees Hall, Jeremy Ruckert, where do you stand? How do you like them? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. And, and by the way, thanks so much for supporting the channel too. I mean, um, you know, th this draft weekend has been crazy. The past month has been crazy with all the with all the draft stuff, all the wide receiver rumors, and the support that you guys showed the channel is uh, true. It's I, I literally can't even put it into words, right? It, it's unreal, unbelievable, and um, I'm incredibly incredibly grateful. So thanks so much. I appreciate it, and as always, go Jets. Mm -hmm.